Hey, thank you so much for watching. I'm Pippi Peterson. So when I got my RV, I didn't understand anything about my electrical system, converters versus inverters, AC, DC. But after a lot of DIY work and research, it makes a lot more sense. So I wanna help you understand it in a really simple way. All the things that you need to know about how they go together and the different things that they do. So RV electrical systems are usually run off of DC power. So that means like direct current. And houses traditionally are run off of AC, which is alternating current. So in an RV, you've got like all of your lights and some pre-installed appliances like TVs. And if you look at the appliances, you'll notice they've got plugs that look like this, almost like something that you'd plug into your cigarette lighter. Now, if you look at most of your regular appliances like phone charger or you know electric tea kettle blender anything that you usually would plug into a house you've got a plug that looks something like this at least in the u.s so this is an ac plug most houses and anything connected to a municipal power source is going to be ac like at, if you park at somebody's house or at a campground so when you plug your cord your shore cord into power you're accessing ac power however your rv needs dc power so that is the job of a converter it takes the ac power coming in from your shore source and converts it to dc to run all of your pre-installed dc appliances in your rv like lights and all the appliances that usually come with it. Most RVs will come standard with a converter and the converter is usually called a converter charger and so its other job is to charge your house batteries. When you are not plugged in to an AC power source like a municipal shore power then you are running off of your batteries and since your batteries produce DC power you're not actually using your converter when you're essentially off-grid. If you are running off of your batteries and you only have a converter you can't use any AC powered appliances. You can only use appliances that have a DC power cord like this. So if you're out traveling around and you stop for a little bit and your RV only has a converter you can't use anything that plugs into this you can only use appliances that plug into this. You can't use AC power to run a DC appliance and you can't use DC power to run an AC appliance. So how do you run AC power when you're running off of your batteries? Either you can turn on your generator, which will create AC power and the generators run by gasoline. That will also give you AC power as well as DC power or you can use an inverter. You can either get a big inverter that's gonna power your whole RV electrical system, or you can keep your converter and get a small inverter that just plugs into a cigarette lighter in your RV and then run off that. However, that will only give you like one AC receptacle. So you can plug in like one thing at a time. And you know, if the cord's not long enough, then you can't like bring it to the kitchen or whatever, you know, it's gotta be wherever your DC receptacle is. What an inverter does is it takes the DC power from your batteries and converts it to AC so that you can still use your AC powered appliances, your receptacles in your RV, plus you can also use your DC power. And the inverters will also charge your house batteries just like converters will. There are two types of inverters. There's pure sine wave and then there's modified sine wave. The modified sine wave inverters aren't really ideal for full-time RV residents because they can interrupt some charges like on electric toothbrushes. Definitely it can affect some medical equipment if you need that um, and also some larger appliances. But they're cheaper and they're great for the weekend warriors. The pure sine wave inverters offer an uninterrupted stream of power and are a must for full-time residents like me. Also, if you're interested in getting solar on your RV, you're definitely going to need an inverter. Converters will only work with AC as their power source and solar power is providing DC power. By the way, I used to have a converter in my RV. It was the original install and I've now got an inverter. 
and the converter the first like couple weeks I was living in my RV I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to do it because I'd go to bed it'd be quiet and I would just hear a e like this buzz it would drive me nuts finally I got used to it but later I learned that some RV technicians in the field they actually call those converters buzz boxes luckily I got my inverter it's not installed in the RV it's underneath the RV in one of the bins my converter was below my dinette so I just was constantly hearing this buzz so anyway keep that in mind about converters by the way I have worn my Pink Floyd shirt in one other video and I got a lot of comments on it yes I'm a big fan I have all of their albums my favorite album is metal from 1971 uh, many years before I was born I think David Gilmore is looking very very dapper in the center fold out anyway I thought it was appropriate because we were talking about inverter converter machines and I kind of think that the machine from which you were here maybe looks like my converter <laughs> Okay, well, maybe not too much. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Once again, I'm Pippi Peterson. Stay tuned for more upcoming solar videos, a solar on your RV. The next video is going to be on batteries. Then I've got one on how to determine how much electricity you need to build your solar system or your PV system. And then I've got a full scratch, a full build from scratch of a solar panel, as well as a full installation on my RV of other solar panels. So stay tuned for that. You can connect with me on my RV Living Forum and other RVers at pippetings.com, where you can also get your Keep It Simple bumper sticker. You can connect with me as well on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you so much. Till next time, keep it simple.